Hello, my name is Dan Poffenberger. I am an Irish research specialist at the Family History Library, and uh, today I'm teaching the third part of a, a series of classes on strategies for finding your Irish ancestors' origins, uh, of course, their origins in Ireland. Um, again, this is the third part, and uh, uh, the goal with the whole course was that you would, uh, as a beginner or intermediate genealogist, you would have a basic background of Irish records, including jurisdictions, that you would, uh, if you haven't already, begin to expand the scope of your ancestor and how you think about your ancestor um, uh, context-wise, because I, I feel like too often uh, we isolate our ancestor to just an individual or two. And then um, we've been discussing uh, five strategies. Uh, we've actually discussed the first uh, two strategies in the previous uh, lessons, um, as well as context and record issues. Then uh, stra the straightforward strategy number one, that was in lesson uh, or part one of this lesson. Uh, part two of this lesson uh, extensively covered a variety of sources uh, that uh, could potentially give you an indication of where your ancestor was from in Ireland, uh, many of which go unchecked uh, by a basic uh, genealogist, if you will. Uh, in this lesson, we'll be discussing the final three of the five strategies, cluster migration, surname distribution, and uh, a somewhat brief discussion on the emerging strategy of uh, DNA uh, testing to help you. Let's talk cluster migration, and uh, part of this will be the story of a little old man from Ireland who came into the Family History Library. Uh, before we discuss him, uh, imagine you were immigrating somewhere. Uh, where would you go uh, if uh, you were immigrating to Australia, for example? Uh, or if you're from Australia, you're immigrating to the United States. Um, where would you go? Uh, I, I doubt you would just hop on a plane and get off the plane and decide, ah, you know, I just try to figure out and just wander someplace. Um, I suspect that you would go someplace where you knew somebody and at least stay there for a moment. Um, now, Catholics uh, practice chain migration. Uh, the Scots-Irish also migrated in groups uh, and many times as congregations. Um, uh, so it's important uh, wherever your ancestor went and established themselves that you study the, the history of the community. This is certainly more difficult if your ancestor went to Boston and stayed there, but even within Boston, uh, there, were, there are communities, or if they went to Brooklyn, uh, I suppose, but the volume of people can make this a little bit more difficult. But if they went to Centerville, Iowa, or Muskegon, Michigan, uh, it can be important to study the history of the community uh, as to who, wh which groups of Irish went there when. And as you do this then, uh, to consider going back to strategy number two and the variety of sources that were discussed there, and then do that for their family, their associates, their neighbors, um, their friends, uh, the fan club, as is, uh, is we know the term. So. Um, that's, uh, that's important to, to add, add to the context of your ancestor. And then as you do this and you pick up surnames of possible associates of your, of your Irish immigrant ancestor, that we then look forward to strategy number four, surname distribution, uh, could be very helpful. But, uh, all right, so uh, to the story of this, uh, of this little old man, uh, this was some years ago, uh, but uh, he came in uh, to the library off of the elevator and please forgive my poor attempt at an Irish uh, accent, but I think uh, attempting it makes the story a little more fun. Uh, maybe not to listen to, but to, uh, to tell. Um, so he comes off the elevator and he walks up to me and he says, yeah, I'd like to look at some Irish records. And I said, oh, are you, uh, you here on holiday? And he goes, uh, yeah, that's right. I just came down from Butte, Montana. And uh, I remember thinking to myself, wow, you come all the way to the United States and you go to Butte, Montana. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't the first place I, I would have thought of. Uh, apologies to those of you uh, from, from Butte. Uh, I've been there a few times and uh, it seems like an especially meaningful place if you're into mining and mining history, I suppose. 
uh, in particular. But uh, uh, anyway, I said, all right. Well, uh, at the time, there weren't many digitized records. So I actually put him on uh, microfilm for the 1901 census. He was from the parish of Iris in County Cork. And uh, so he started going through the microfilm. And as he did, he um, actually uh, came up back up to the desk and he said, come here, come here. And I went walking up to his reader and he goes, you know, the uh, gold for Padre Harrington. Yeah, this is his grandfather. And, uh, and you know, the American footballer. And he, well, he turned the page or, or rolled to the next census page or, or two. And he goes, you know, the American footballer, Joey Harrington. Uh, this is his great uncle. And, uh, and then he was going from page to page indicating uh, people and, and where they had gone to or they had relatives. One had become a judge in Los Angeles and, and different things and went on to tell me that um, uh, between about 1870 and 1915, that 1,100 of the 17 people who left went to Butte, Montana. And that's why he wanted to go. And I still have my old notes, uh, his writing, uh, uh, sharing this story with me, but uh, it's an it's an important story because uh, it's a great way to illustrate that our ancestors were much uh, typically much more connected than we give them credit for, and that's critical uh, oftentimes to solving an immigrant problem. Uh, now I thought he was just this savant, and certainly he could have been, but as it turns out, as I checked into his story a little bit, uh, I discovered that there were some excellent published sources. Uh, one of this, uh, one of them was a book titled The Butte Irish, uh, for example. And uh, one of the quotes, or a couple of the quotes from this, uh, indicate that six of Ireland's 32 counties accounted for almost 48% of the total immigration to 1900. So 50% chance that you're, if you know nothing other than Ireland, a 50% 50 chance that your ancestor came from one of the six counties if they went to Butte. Um, he also wrote that as, uh, as late as 1917, uh, a fa a Father Patrick Brosnan wrote back to Ireland that everyone here is from Castletown Beer, uh, and also that Butte is a great city and that they have seven fine Catholic parishes in Butte, uh, all of them Irish Catholic parishes. So um, again, those Irish Catholic parish registers could also provide more specific detail in Ireland as to where somebody was from. Uh, there was another uh, title of a, uh, of a book from that area called uh, Who Were My Ancestors? Actually, I think there may have been two or three books uh, that contained parish and townland maps of southwestern Cork with population tables, uh, with historical reasons uh, for why people left uh, famine, the closure of the copper mine. It had genealogies of, of families uh, published there. It was, it was really a dream uh, for somebody with ancestry from that area. Um, and so uh, the, the point of cluster migration, I suppose then, is to study the history on the United, United States side uh, where your ancestor arrived and settled and stayed, um, as well as the people uh, they were associated with there, uh, because in so doing, um, you may gain uh, the clues that you need to locate a place in Ireland. Now, as you locate a place in Ireland, something that could fit with that would be number four, the surname distribution status, uh, strategy. It can give you a place to start to gather evidence, at least as you locate places where your uh, surname, your Irish surname uh, is from. Um, now, this, um, yeah, it's a place to start. Uh, certainly, it doesn't work as well if you have a less common, or if you have a, um, if you have a really common surname. You know, Kelly and Murphy are obvious examples. Um, but uh, if you have a, a less common surname, it can be helpful. Um, uh, certainly, if you have the surnames of two or more people uh, who you believe were connected, uh, uh, say uh, I mentioned uh, the 1860 census, finding the Irish. Uh, all of the Irish in, in the little township where your ancestor lived uh, from that area and figuring out where those surnames all come together, not because you know that they're connected, but you only suspect that they're connected, could be a, an approach uh, to follow, uh, certainly using the surname distribution strategy. Now with this then, you need surname lists. Uh, the best list really would be uh, 
uh, for most people, I would say, would be Griffith's valuation, a tax that was assessed uh, across Ireland beginning um, uh, in about 1847 and ending in, in about 1864 in the north of Ireland. Uh, the whole country wasn't uh, assessed at one time. Uh, now, the estimation is that, that pick, this picks up 90% of your heads of household. Uh, but the thought you may have is that, well, my ancestor left before um, or left during the famine. And so uh, if the, uh, the valuation was assessed in the 18 uh, or 18, uh, late 1850s or something, my ancestor was gone, so it's not relevant. Well, no, because uh, in many cases, most it wasn't like entire families completely left there. There could be uh, parents or um, uh, aunts and uncles who stayed behind who uh, would be uh, providing evidence that your family uh, surname is, is located in that place. Um, so the strategy was to, is to use the, your surnames, uh, put them in a database, or uh, it was maybe something as simple as plotting them on a map and doing the same for the other surnames that connect to your ancestor. Uh, this is sort of, uh, we might say, old school. Uh, but this was a strategy that I learned from a, a, a famous genealogist to the library anyway, Jim Hennessy, a famous Irish genealogist, uh, showed me how he would take uh, these uh, surname lists when he had more than one surname and he had a county, he would begin to plot this surnames out using a source like Griffith's valuation, uh, which you can learn about uh, more about in the Family Search uh, Wiki, uh, Go to Ireland and Taxation as a subject. Um, but uh, we would take these names and uh, plot them out and then write our numbers out on uh, a map. And uh, you can see, for example, for uh, these uh, surnames for the um, parish of Inver, uh, there were 17 of one and 50, uh, 17 uh, Cassidy's and 15 Quinn's uh, that showed up here. Uh, now, it doesn't mean your ancestors from there, uh, if you have both of those uh, coming together, say, by marriage. It does not, but it certainly gives you a place to look at the records in detail to see if potentially your family is from there. And, and again, this strategy will come into play when you've exhausted uh, uh, strategies one, two, and, and three, really. Uh, now, an excellent place to go. Uh, work on a strategy like this is at a website called johngranham.com or Irish Ancestors. And going uh, live, if you will, to the website, uh, you'll notice in the upper left corner, it is uh, johngranham.com, the noted Irish genealogist. Uh, you can type in a surname and it will use Griffith's valuation. Now I'll use one that's more common. This is uh, the surname of my uh, great grandfather and his father and his father. And even one that's more common, you can see a certain tendency uh, located uh, here in the Connaught and Leinster uh, border region, if you will. Uh, and here it will give you uh, some indication that it's uh, extremely common in Ross County Roscommon and County Galway, for example. Uh, you can also uh, use surname distribution with uh, other uh, record types, so a great resource, including uh, baptisms there. Um, I believe my Karen Fallon was the uh, son of a Margaret Hines, and so you can add a second surname, and it will show you the locations uh, where these surnames come together based on the Griffiths valuation. You can see it in Galway, up in Sligo, but also down here uh, in, in Drum, and uh, where my people were from in particular. Uh, or in Creek. So, um, so there you go. This is uh, one way you can use a surname uh, distribution and, and, and use your different surnames. Uh, note too that, um, that it gives you additional information as far as uh, variant spellings, uh, even the Gaelic and some uh, surname information as well. And uh, you'll notice others, if there's a website or if there are published family histories, those may also uh, show up here, so an excellent, uh, an excellent resource. Um, all right, the uh, here's an example of using the Catholic uh, records indexes to find a family that matches closely to my uh, family. Now, uh, U.S. sources indicate that Andrew, Margaret, Richard, 
Patrick and Mary are siblings, there is no one census record that brings them all together, but obituaries and other records. Um, and then uh, the family that I have found in Roots, Ireland, uh, really the only family that fits. Um, and thank goodness Richard is a less common name, I suppose. Uh, but Andrew isn't particularly common, but uh, the Andrew is about the right time period in particular if, uh, if my U.S. source is off by a year. Uh, Margaret A. doesn't show up in 1834 in the parish register in Ireland. However, there is an Anne baptized later. And, and knowing that the father of these children died in 1848 when Margaret would have been um, just a, a young teenager, that could impact uh, Margaret's uh, view of things and how she listed her age. Uh, Richard fits perfectly time period wise, as does Patrick as far as month, but the year is off. But again, that could be tied into my, uh, uh, to the sources I have on the US side. Um, but uh, at least now I have a, a family here that I can go to attempt to disprove uh, by virtue of them staying in, um, in Ireland or, or no. And so this, uh, I, this family was found using something similar to a surname distribution strategy. I have a couple additional clues that help with that family. Uh, the tithe plotment in 1830 lists only one Connell. That's a, another surname list. Uh, that's about 40% of your heads of ha household. Uh, and this is in Bolnabracki uh, Parish. There's a Richard Connell, again, less common name of Killiskill in Townland. Uh, the landlord is the Marquis of uh, Lansdowne, uh, who may himself have records of, of additional Connells in the area. Also, uh, someone, um, Noel French, I believe, was kind enough to put together a history of Bolnabracki. And... Um, and in 1843, he states that Lord Lansdowne assisted the immigration of 76 persons from the parish to North America, which is um, precisely really the time period in which, based on the American census records, my people came over. And so uh, these are the kinds of things you're hoping to put together. Now, uh, a brief discussion about DNA. Uh, it's becoming a more and more useful tool. It, it, we could use more Irish testing. I think as a general rule, they haven't tested as much because, well, uh, they know where they're from. And there are some great groups that can help. So as you begin to do this, I would uh, consider uh, going to the website for the International Society of Genetic Genealogy, which has uh, a listing of Irish DNA projects, uh, both autosomal, uh, and why DNA? Uh, my uncle, who's a direct descendant of Kieran Fallon, uh, has done a Y DNA test, and that is starting to pro provide clues uh, and, uh, and help uh, with the conclusions that I'm drawing on the Fallon line. Uh, there are also Facebook groups like Genetic Gene Genealogy Ireland uh, that you could use uh, as you start to connect with others uh, who have your ancestry. Um, or interested in DNA, but uh, I would suggest uh, testing um, uh, your DNA and then start watching for those who are connected uh, to your the Irish side of your tree. And that's also another great way to connect with others who may have information about your family that you don't have that was passed down to them. So uh, I hope uh, as you've learned about these three additional strategies that you find this helpful uh, in your research. And, uh, and best of luck to you, if I can say it that way. The luck of the Irish as you research uh, the uh, origins of your Irish ancestors.